Hello, hello, Mr. Chonsky. To a colossal 20% of total wealth. Uh, studies by Economic Policy Institute and others show that inequality is very closely correlated with unionization. The unions rise and fall, inequality falls and rises in tandem. Remarkably close correlation, the mechanisms are quite clear. Uh, Reagan and Thatcher knew what they were doing <clears throat> when they launched the global neoliberal assault with a major attack on unions. It's uh, necessary, of course, to destroy any means for working people to defend themselves against the state corporate attack. By now, mainstream economics, like economists like uh, Lawrence Summers, uh, reach the same conclusion that uh, the decline of unionization is the major, if not the major factor in the growing inequality. During these years, strike action has sharply declined. It's practically declined, declined practically to zero in recent years. It's a very good measure of the loss of defense against the assault. Precarity has sharply increased. By now, a majority of working people report that they live from paycheck to paycheck, no reserves in case of some emergency. Democracy, of course, declines with concentration of private power. Uh, similar developments have taken place in much of the world. Some respects is even worse in Europe than here. Uh, structure of the European Union has transferred decision making from national governments, which are to some extent responsive to their own populations, transferred from there to an unelected bureaucracy in Brussels, the famous Troika, unelected European Commission, IMF, major banks, mostly German, French banks. Of course, you can guess what kind of policies follow, including the highly destructive austerity policies. We're now seeing other examples in the incapacity to deal with the epidemic. Now, this has deeply embittered the population. It's led to anger, resentment, breakdown, collapse of the traditional parties. They barely exist anymore. Uh, the rise of uh, fertile terrain for the rise of demagogues of the Trump style, comparable ones in Europe, Modi in India, others who can use the opportunity, the breakdown, to uh, impose deeply authoritarian and destructive policies. Well, that's the great achievement of the neoliberal reforms. There have been periods of regression before. They've been overcome. The tasks are far more urgent, urgent now than they were in the past. To a colossal 20% of total wealth, uh, studies by Economic Policy Institute and others show that inequality is very closely correlated with unionization. The unions rise and fall, inequality falls and rises in tandem. Remarkably close correlation, the mechanisms are quite clear. Uh, Reagan and Thatcher knew what they were doing <clears throat> when they launched the global neoliberal assault with a major attack on unions. It's uh, necessary, of course, to destroy any means for working people to defend themselves against the state corporate attack. By now, mainstream economics, like economists like uh, Lawrence Summers, uh, reach the same conclusion that uh, the decline of unionization is the major, if not the major factor in the growing inequality. During these years, strike action has sharply declined. It's practically declined, declined practically to zero in recent years. 
it's never been accepted by the mass of the population before. They've over, always risen up and opposed it, led to many advances. No reason why that can't happen now. So I think the answer to your question is, you're absolutely right, we shouldn't accept it.